Hey guys, good to see you again. So I know the last time we had our video, it was on how to love someone with vitiligo. I had a lot of fun with my husband, uh, Sean James, and he gave a lot of good information, I think, on how to support someone with vitiligo. So back here again, it's been two weeks, but there's been a lot of progress, as you can see, um, on my repigmentation of vitiligo. So I'm gonna get up a little close here. You guys can kind of see there is a lot of new um, areas where I am repigmenting. I'm gonna kind of go back and forth. And so you can see this is all new here. Um, this area used to just be all one big white spot and now it's starting to fill in. You can see here how this is kind of filling in on the sides, sides and it's kind of fill, going, kind of filling in like this. You know, it's kind of coming in like that. Um, if you guys don't remember, this all used to be one big white spot right here and this is now starting to fill in and it's almost completely filled in. Of course, this is new. These are new on the sides. Um, this on my nose um, is new. And of course, all of these are new. Let me stop moving so it won't blur. But all of this is new. All of these spots here are new um, around my eyebrows. This is new. This is new. So I'm very excited, guys, um, about the progress. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on in my ears. I don't think those are going to dot out. I think I have a feeling those are just going to fill in. But you, around my hairline, um, is starting to really uh, fill in very well. And if you guys don't notice, I have a spot here. Um, and um, this is a vitiligo spot in my hair. So um, it looks like I have gray, but I don't. Um, this is actually just uh, from vitiligo. So... Hopefully that will start to continue to fill in. One thing that's interesting about vitiligo, I'm like noticing on my legs, and I don't know, you guys may chime in or you might add a comment for those, any of those of you who are watching that has vitiligo. Um, a lot of times we may lose ha hair in the area that we have vitiligo and it's like alopecia. And it's called alopecia, so therefore, um, the hair will actually come back first and then you'll notice like white hair um, as the hair comes back and then you'll notice pigmented hair and around those um, pigmented areas usually the um, kind of what we call melaninogenesis that's I know it's a big word but it's the start of the melanin cells or the re kind of um, formation of the melanin cell starts around the pigment in the hair. So it starts in the around the hair follicles. And that's why you'll kind of see dots um, form is because those um, those kind of areas of repigmentation uh, is starting around the hair follicles first. So that's pretty cool. So what are we going to talk about this week? I think we should talk about autoimmune, dis autoimmune disorders because, you know, vitiligo is an autoimmune disorder. And um, of course, there's a lot of different autoimmune disorders out there. And we're just kind of, I'm going to generalize and give you an understanding of what is an autoimmune disorder. You guys may kind of know about it or heard about it, uh, may not know that a, a lot of diseases that are considered autoimmune disorders that really um, are in that classification. So um, kind of like, what is an autoimmune disorder? An autoimmune disorder is basically when your, your immune system is just going crazy, is overreacting. It's, you know how some people tend to overreact, they're like, ah, you know, <laughs> and um, you know, they tend to be a little bit dramatic in situations. Well, that's what your immune system is doing, is being way too dramatic in certain situations. And so what happens is it doesn't recognize your certain tissues in your body as your normal tissues. And so it thinks that it's trying to defend your um, body from certain invaders. And it's, and yet it's still, they don't recognize it, you know, you, that you have, this is part of your body. So it doesn't recognize that it's part of, you know, an organ or a tissue that's supposed to be there. And kind of let's go down the list of all the autoimmune disorders you may not have known, which were autoimmune disorders you may have known. Let's start kind of like what a really well-known rheumatoid arthritis. A lot of people think that rheumatoid arthritis is just a chronic condition and it's not necessarily an autoimmune disorder, but it is. It's your immune system attacking the aligning of your uh, joints. 
So that's why you get the inflammation and the swelling and the redness and rheumatoid arthritis. What's another big one? Another big one is MS or, mul or multiple sclerosis. And with MS, it's actually attack attacking the lining. And you hear a lot of linings. Um, you, it's attacking the lining of your nerve cells, which is um, the axonal cells or the myelin. Um, it actually attacks the nerve cells by doing that. And so you'll get pain um, and weak muscle weakness and you can't walk. Um, so you, people will have trouble walking or kind of get progressively weak because of that or have trouble with their vision. They may lose sight. Um, the other, another type of uh, autoimmune disorder is a big one is type 1 diabetes, not type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes. And that's where the immune system will attack the cells in your pancreas that makes insulin. And so therefore you're not able to make insulin and you're insulin dependent. Um, let's see, what's another one? Um, inflammatory bowel disease like uh, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, and you guys will see a lot of commercials on television about Crohn's disease and um, ulcerative colitis um, and how to control that with medications. Well, basically immune system is attacking the lining of your um, guts, mainly your small bowel or your large bowel. In the case of ulcerative colitis, it's your large bowel. And usually in Crohn's, it's a, usually a, a, a more in the small bowel. Let's see, uh, myasthenia gravis is attacking um, your nerve endings or the, um, the receptors, um, certain receptors in your nerve endings, so it causes progressive muscle weakness. And, oh, Graves' disease and Hashimoto's, which are two types of thyroid. Graves' disease is a hyperthyroid, which you're producing too much thyroid hormone, and Hashimoto's is a low thyroid syndrome, where you're, it's the... Uh, your immune system is attacking your thyroid, which causes too much, you not to make enough thyroid hormone. And you also have uh, a lot of other ones. Um, of course, vitiligo. Well, what do you think's happened in vitiligo? Vitiligo is when you, um, your immune system is attacking your melanin cells. You hear a lot about psoriasis now, all these medications out for psoriasis. Well, it's like a T-cell complex with psoriasis is kind of uh, interesting, but basically you have an overproduction of cells and that's why you're, it's like your, your skin, which is an organ, it's a one of the largest organs in your body, it overproduces cells and you'll get cell slothing and redness and inflammation at the um, skin level and then it's like you're producing too much. It's like your cells are kind of overproducing and so that's why you get a lot of flakiness and um, you know, sloughing off your cells. So, um, what is, what are some of the treatments of, you know, when we use, um, autoimmune, just, you know, when we are treating autoimmune disorders, you kind of see mainly is what we're trying to do is get the immune system to calm down, you know, calm down. And so what happens is we usually use steroids or we can, um, a lot of times people will gain weight from that and they'll have problems with steroids. They won't tolerate them. They'll have mood problems or mood switches and changes with steroids. Also, you can use um, things that are usually used for um, cancer uh, treatment to kind of calm the immune system down, which are like, especially for rheumatoid arthritis, meth methotrexate or um, other types of chemotherapy agents. Um, and a lot of people don't tolerate that very well. Um, they may have a lot of different side um, effects from just the uh, symptoms um, related to uh, using those agents. Also, the big things out now are called biologics. Biologics target something specifically in the immune system that's being triggered, um, certain factors in the immune system, what we call cytokines in the immune system, um, in certain cascades of what happens in the immune system when you have uh, an inflammatory reaction. It will actually um, kind of modulate that in a sense. And biologics, what's the big, big thing with those? They are very expensive and they hurt your pocketbook. You, 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 and if you don't have insurance, it's almost impossible to um, use biologics to control your symptoms. Um, and also, you know, once you come off of biologics or once you come off medications, what happens? The symptoms come right back 
And so if you're not actually suppressing your immune system by other means, then you're just going to kind of have the reoccurrence of sy symptoms. It actually doesn't cure disease. It just actually helps the symptoms. And so that's why I love the approach that I use. It just doesn't, um, you know, cure the symptoms. It actually, actually, you know, helps. We're treating at the root when I, the type of uh, treatment that I'm using currently. So um, biologics also have a lot of side effects. You can um, be more susceptible to disease like tuberculosis. You always hear that on, you know, you hear that at the end, blah, 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 and tuberculosis, and blah, 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 you know, you hear all those things that you have to worry about when you, at the, you know, they rattle on all the stuff at the end of the commercials. The tuberculosis and other infections are, are, um, are part of that. So what do I use and um, what does a functional medicine um, physician will recommend for autoimmune disorders are usually the things that are what is the things that is setting off your immune system in the first place is a poor diet. We call it a typical American diet. And that's a diet with a lot of processed foods, a diet with like high in fats, high in bad fats, not high in good fats because good fats are good, um, but high in bad fats, high in sugars. Um, a lack of uh, nutrients, um, so there you're not getting enough nutrients, so you have to get the nutrients that you need, uh, and also um, exercise. Now, for me, um, and and I'm telling you, across the board, that's what we usually do for autoimmune uh, treatment of autoimmune disorders. That from MS. Now, there's certain things where we have to kind of. Um, modulate. We have to actually um, maybe tweak a little bit over here. Uh, for MS, we may give them more a higher fat, more keto-like diet. Um, for um, rheumatoid arthritis, we may kind of do something over here. But most of most of the time, we will have them follow uh, an autoimmune uh, autoimmune protocol diet, um, which is a diet low in processed foods, um, high in vegetables, fruits and vegetables, good proteins. If they're vegan, good um, plant proteins um, and good fats, and also uh, find the nutrients that they're lacking in and um, supply those nutrients and exercise. And if, with me, of course, with light treatment. So I do light treatments um, uh, three times a week. And that is very, very helpful for um, recurring. And you have to remember, I've only been doing this for two months. Before, I never, I didn't have any of this going on. So it's um, definitely been very helpful for me. I kind of put my mind to it. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get um, my exercise, my nutrients in, and change my diet, and make sure I consistently do this in order to heal. And that's what I decided to do. And that's why I'm doing a video right now on it. So um, if you guys are interested um, in treating, you have a, if you're out there and you have an autoimmune disorder, and you know that um, you don't necessarily want to um, have the cost of a biologic or or um, you know do the the treatments that they're recommending doing, and you just feel horrible. Why don't you consider doing functional medicine? You can always, you know, look me up if you're on the south side of Atlanta or in the area. There's a website called um, the Institute of Functional Medicine. Look up a functional medicine doctor um, or even an integrative medicine doctor and think about treating a different way. Okay. So um, it, uh, and some people may not disagree with me. If you know, you, you may disagree with me, may not disagree, some physicians may, but it's, it's not going to hurt. And I'm definitely going to tell you a lifestyle change that's cleaner and healthier is definitely not going to hurt you. So um, next week we will be talking about, um, I think we'll do, I'll have to see. I think we'll um, maybe do the autoimmune protocol, nutrient supplements, or even talk a little bit about um, functional medicine. We'll see. I'll see where um, I kind of go with that. But you guys uh, follow my progress with me. I'm so excited about what's going on and, and the progress that I'm having. And uh, I hope to see you next week. If you have any comments or you want to subscribe to the channel, it's DPC Doc. You can su subscribe to the channel. And if you have any comments or questions, just you know put those questions below. All right. I'll see you guys next week. Have an awesome weekend, an awesome week. Bye. <laughs>